back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going to be going through question number four from the October 2022 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P4 paper. This question is about binomial expansion. So part A says, find in ascending powers of x the first four non-zero terms of the binomial expansion of g of x, where g of x is equal to 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Give each coefficient in simplest form. So first of all, we're starting off with 1 over the square root of, and you've got 4 minus x squared. Now there's an x squared term in here. Be very careful about that, not to miss that out. So we know the square root of something is that thing to the power of a half, and 1 over something can be written in index form with a negative power. So this can be written as 4 minus x squared to the power of negative a half. Now when we want to expand um, you know, binomials in P4, we always have either fractional or negative powers. In this case we've got fractional power which is also negative. We cannot use the NCR method. So we have to use the formula that they gave us for binomials, which the, the expression, the bracket must be in, the ter in terms of 1, and then you have your x term. It has to be a 1 plus or minus, and then the x term. So this has to be rewritten so that there's a 1 in this place here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out 4, open a bracket, and write 1 here, right? Because this has to be a 1. 4 times 1 is 4, so this is the same as that. Then I have to write this term, adjust it, so it's also going to be giving me x squared when I multiply by 4. So there must be, I must divide it by 4. So that's minus a quarter x squared. And all of that is raised to the power of negative a half. Okay, so this is the same as that. This is 4 minus x squared to the power of negative a half. But now I've got this 1 in this place, and what I can do is I can split this up using my laws of indices, I know a to the power, a times b to the power of n, all of it, is the same as a to the power of n times b to the power of n. So I can write this as 4 to the power of negative a half, and I have 1 minus a quarter x squared, x squared, also to the power of negative a half. And we know that 4 to the power of negative a half is the same as um, 1 over 4 to the power of a half, which is a half times 1 minus a quarter x squared to the power of negative a half. Now I can expand this using our formula. So I start off with this. So what I can do is, I'm, I know our formula is if you have 1 plus x to the power of n, and this is in the formula book, but after a little while you get used to it, it's 1 plus n times x plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus, and it continues on that same pattern. Okay, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial times x cubed, and so on. So what I can do here is I can take, I can say this is equal to a half times, and now what I can do is I can open a bracket, so I have 1, it's going to be 1 plus nx, 1 plus nx. n is the power, which is minus a half. Okay, and x is whatever's in this place here. x is all of this term here. X is this whole term, including the sign. So the X in our formula is the same as whatever's in this position here. And that's going to be minus a quarter X squared. That's 1 plus NX. Those are the first two terms. Plus, then we have N times N minus 1. So minus a half times minus a half minus 1, which is minus 3 over 2, over 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, which is 2, times, and then you're going to have minus a quarter x squared raised to the power of 2. That's the second term of the expansion. That's the third term of the expansion. We want to find the first four terms. All right, so we're going to now continue. We have minus a half times minus 3 over 2 times minus 5 over 2 over 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1, 3 times 2, times minus a quarter x squared raised to the power of 3. I've gone out of the space there. I should really not do that. Okay, let's just uh, adjust it a little bit. I know you can't do this in the exam. Just, okay. All right, so that's equal to that. Keep it in the, in the space. So now, that will give us a half times. Now we've got to simplify this. This is one here. Now, the minus and minus is going to give us a plus. You have a half times a quarter, which is 1 over 8. So plus 
an eighth times x squared. And then you're going to have minus and minus is plus, and minus something squared is also plus, so this is also going to be positive. You're going to have 3 over 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so 3 over 8, and I'll deal with this one after this is um, 1 over 16, x squared. Then you've got the next term, which is, and this is x, sorry, x to the power 4. It's x squared squared, x to the power 4, be careful about that. The next term you've got minus times minus times minus, will be negative, and this will also become negative, because you're going to square a cube a negative number. So you'll have negative times negative, which is positive. So this will also be a positive term. And you're going to have the 3 cancelling with the 3. So on the top, you'll have 5 over 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And then in the brackets, you've got cubed. So you're going to have the minus already taken care of it. It's going to be x. Um, it's going to be 1 over 4 cubed, which is 64. And you're going to have x to the power of 2 to the power of 3, which is x to the power of 6. Okay, so those are the first 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. All we're left to do now is to simplify this. Um, so we have a half times 1, which is a half. And you have 1 over 8 times 1 half, which is 1 over 16, x squared. And you have uh, 16 times 16, which is, I think, 2, 5, 6. So 3 over 2, 5, 6, x to the power of 4. Plus, and you have... 5 over, that's going to be 64, that's going to be 32 times 64, let's see what that gives us. Okay, we're going to have, um, yeah, so let's just, uh, let's just, that's a half times 16 times, half times 8 times 8, which is, just to make sure that's right, yeah, that's 256, and you're going to have a half times 16 times 64. You've got a half here, right, a half outside the bracket. So a half times 16 times 64. So that's going to be um, 32 times 64. 2048. So 5 over 2048, x to the power of 6. So there's our expansion. So we know that this is equal to, all right, so we can say this, the beginning, what we had at the beginning is equal to this expansion here. Then it says, state the range of values of x for which this expansion is valid. Now, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that, you know, basically this is an expansion that is going to go on forever. Right? It's going to go on forever because the, the terms will continue on. It's called an infinite expansion. Normally, when you have a positive integer, like you have, you know, n times n minus 1, and then you have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, if you have a positive integer power, there, there's going to be a point where one of these brackets becomes zero. For example, if this was to the power of three, when you have n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three, you'll have three minus three, zero. The whole of that term becomes zero, and that zero will appear in every other term. Therefore, it will stop. Okay, with the x cubed one, it will, that will be the last term. Right? So those are finite. But these ones which are negative and fractional powers, those are infinite expansions. They go on forever and ever. So... I can't say, for example, that this is going to be approximately the same as that. This will be the same as this, unless the value of the number that goes in here is so small, okay, that um, as you raise it to the power of 2 and pay it power of 3 and the power of five, 4 and 5, as you keep raising them to higher and higher powers, they get smaller and smaller in value. So if this number that goes inside this bracket, if its magnitude is less than 1, then the terms as you go on and on are going to get so small that they don't make any difference to the actual value. And so we can say that this expansion is something which is valid. I can stop there and say this is almost the same as that. Okay, so I can say that um, 4 minus x squared to the power of negative a half is almost the same as a half plus 1 over 16 x squared plus 3 over 2, 5, 6 x to the power 4 plus 5 over 2048 x to the power 6 upon the condition that the number that goes in this place here, okay, the number that goes in this place here is its magnitude is less than 1. Okay, then, as you go further on and on in the expansion, 
the terms will get so small that they don't make a difference to the value. So I can stop at a certain point. If, this, if the value is more than one, then the, the value of the terms will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as you go on. And you won't, you won't be able to say that that's going to be approximately the same. You won't be able to stop, basically, and it won't be valid. So here we have to say that the magnitude of, so we, we write this, when you write this in this form, a half, one minus a quarter x squared to the power of negative a half, we can say when the magnitude of this term here, when the magnitude of a quarter x squared is less than one, this is a valid expansion. So we can say it's like a quarter times the magnitude of x squared is less than one. So the magnitude of x squared is less than four. Therefore, the magnitude of x must be less than two. Okay, no, no, we don't have to, we don't write plus or minus two because we're talking about the magnitude. Okay, so the magnitude of, of, of x is less than 2. That is the condition for this to be a valid expansion. All right, so that's part B uh, with a bit of an explanation with it as well. Now for part C, it says use the expansion from part A, which I've written down over here, to find a fully simplified rational approximation for root 3. Okay, so we've got to find an approximation for root 3 using our expansion. Now, if we think about it carefully here, I want to try and get root 3 out of this. Now, I can see that the square root of 4 minus x squared, okay, that's the square root of something. So if I say, let's find out the value of x so that, for, so that such that 4 minus x squared is going to equal 3, right? So if I rearrange it, I have 4 minus 3 is 1 is equal to x squared. Therefore, we can say x squared is equal to plus or minus 1. So if I use 1 or I use minus 1, I will get root 3, okay? That will become root 3. So if I choose x equals 1, I could easily choose x equals minus 1, all right? And I substitute it into here. I get 1 over the square root of 3, as we've seen. And I can say that's equal to, and I can also replace the x equals 1 into this expression on this side. So I have a half plus, now of course all of these are going to become just 1, because 1 squared, 1 to the power of 4, 1 to the power of 6. So I have 1 over 16 plus... I have 3 over 256 plus, and I have 5 over 2048. Now, uh, I'm going to add these fractions together and see what I get. So when I add these fractions together, I'm going to get a half. So 1, let me just do it this way, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 16, 1 over 16 plus 3 over 256, plus 5 over 2048, and that's equal to 1118 over 2048. 1181, sorry, let me just check, make sure. 81 over 2048. Okay, so that's 1 over root 3. So therefore, if you write the reciprocal, we can say root 3 over 1, which is root 3, is equal to 2048 over 1181. And there's our answer. All right? And if you want to check to make sure that your answer is kind of like sensible, we can take this and we can see what its value is. Oop, not this, sorry. The reciprocal of this, which I can find by pressing this button. Okay, the reciprocal, so that, that's what we've got exactly there. We press S to D. That's the value of this is 1.734, right? Now let's find what the root, root 3 is. The value of root 3 is 1.732. So they're very close. Okay, root 3 from the calculator is 1.732. And here root 3 gives us an approximate value of 1.734. So they're very close to each other. So of course, we're not finding the exact value by this, but we're finding an approximation. Okay, so we can see that our approximation is sensible. So there is the answer, okay, to this question. We leave it as a decimal, as a fraction, sorry, simplified rational approximation, meaning as a fraction. You don't write, round it to a decimal, you leave it in this form. And that's the answer to this question. Um, any other questions? Other questions? Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions? And this is from the P4 October 2022 paper. Other questions from 
Um, this topic of binomial expansion from P4 can be found in the playlist in this region over here. And you can subscribe to, the, to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.